Hello, I'm Greg Dykstra with Primal Rides. Today we're going to talk about primer seating depth and specifically the variances that are found in, in your primers, the overall height of the primers, the anvil protrusion on the primers, as well as the primer pocket variance that we see on brass. So we're going to look at how to measure those things and we're going to look at how to think about them so that we can overcome them appropriately to achieve maximum accuracy and precision. Before we get into that, I'd like to give a thank you to the members over on shootsmallgroups.com. Now, shootsmallgroups.com is Eric Cortina's website and uh, uh, Cortina Precision website. And you have to pay to be a member there of that forum. And I'm finding that there's a tremendous amount of useful information there. And of course, Eric is a, for those of you that don't know, Eric Cortina is a very accomplished F-class shooter. He shoots on a very prominent team and uh, has some individual accomplishments uh, in that discipline as well. And uh, F-class, uh, I'll leave Google to help you guys figure that out if you're not familiar with what it is. But the F open guys, they're shooting a very small target very far away. So a uh, five inch, the X ring on the on the thousand yard F class target is five inches in diameter. And in order to shoot a, a clean target and, and get the 10 ring every time, that 10 ring is 10 inches at a thousand yards. So very sporty discipline. And Eric Cortina has a, a quite a large following on his YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked that out, I encourage you to go check it out and subscribe. The, the thing I'd like to say thank you for is the membership there on Eric's forum. Is a, there's a, a high percentage of guys that are looking for some very finite levels of accuracy and precision. They're, they're taking it very seriously. And I've been able to have some excellent discussions with some, some of the members there. So thank you for that, guys. And uh, as a result, in 2022, I'm going to be spending a lot of time there. And so I'm going to be generating a bunch of content. I'm going to be creating videos like this. Before we get into this too far, I think it might be good to have a primer anatomy lesson. So this silver thing around the perimeter is the primer cup. This is what the firing pin impacts, and if we uh, take a look at the back side of the primer cup, you'll see that it's pretty nondescript. There's not, there's not a lot going on there. And so it's, it's a soft material, and typically it's uh, some form of brass or some other softer material, so it's not... Uh, going to resist the impact of our firing pin. So that is the primer cup. If we look inside the primer, right here is the anvil. So this little part right here. Now it's got these prongs coming off of it, three of them here. And this anvil, the very top of it, which is the opposite side, of this is what actually squeezes the priming compound between the cup and uh, so let's just continue on here so this is this is the anvil and then this little thing right here is called the foil and you can see I've got a corner of it kind of turned up right here so that that is called the foil and then the actual pellet or priming compound, I've pulled the foil away there a little bit so you guys can see, but down in there is the actual priming compound. So we got the cup, we got the foil, we got the pellet, and we got the anvil. And the anvil is super hard and it resists movement. And when the firing pin hits the cup in the center, it squishes that priming compound in between the top of this anvil and the interior of the cup. And that's how we get ignition. Now, not all primers are the same. They will look different, they'll have different measurements, and they'll just all together be different. So here on the left, we've got a CCI 250. 
and that's a large rifle magnum primer. On the right is a Federal 215 m And despite the fact that these are both large rifle magnum primers, there are some differences between them. The CCI has a slightly different shaped anvil. There's some minor differences. If you look at the amount of contact that the CCI anvils will make up here on the prongs, you've got a little wider surface area here on the Federals, depending on how you look at this. The core components are the same. They still have an anvil, they still have a cup, and uh, you can plainly see the foil there in the CCI primer. The Federal, however, I'm not sure if there's a foil under there or not, but uh, they've got this kind of purple sealant and, and stuff on here instead. So it really is irrelevant. They both work exactly the same. And uh, the primary things that you want to understand is that this anvil is going to stick up a different height than each other. So CCI primers, they, they tend to have the anvils stick up just a little bit more than the Federals. And in some cases, it's a lot more. And uh, even in CCI's own product line, if you compare the BR series of primers to their standard, like uh, a BR4, and compare that to a standard CCI 250, or excuse me, for, uh, CCI 450, you might see that there's some differences there. So when I'm talking about anvil protrusion, what I'm talking about is how far those anvils stick up above the cup. And you can see here the anvils are decidedly above the cup. And you can also see that the CCI sticks up ever so slightly more. It's kind of difficult to see. These two are actually fairly close to each other. But the critical thing here is to understand that the anvils protrude from the cup and they do so at differing in differing amounts. And there's also some variation in the cup thickness also. So now that you understand what the parts of the primer are, it'll be easier to discuss the various dimensions that we're going to get into in the next part of the video. Here we have the digital primeware and the analog primeware. And I have the digital hooked up to this phone over here so we can see the display very easily. And we're going to measure 10 primers. And then we're going to measure 10 pieces of new brass. First we'll just demonstrate that both of these are zeroed. So we've got zeroed and that's a one ten thousandth indicator. So that is very zeroed. We've got the analog primeware and we'll just use our collar here. And it looks like we're zeroed on the analog version as well. And we're using the number three collar because that's uh, that's what's going to work with our 6.5 PRC cases that we're going to be testing here. But first we're going to measure some primers. So I'm just going to pull down on the stem here. You can use your caliper to get this measurement as well, but the primeware digital is so precise. I'm going to measure these and record them, and I'll speed the video up so I don't bore you guys with all this. run some brass and we're dealing with the 6.5 PRC here. And so we have virgin unfired ADG 6.5 PRC brass. So I'm going to run it on the analog so we can get a reading there. And then I'm going to run it on the digital just to show that the analog does indeed give accurate and precise measurements. So we'll start with case number one here, and I'm going to record these as I go and speed the video up just so you guys don't get punished with this.
All right, let's have a look at the numbers here. So we got primers in this column. We got the primer pocket depths in this column. And here we can see our maximum and our minimum on both and our variance that we measured. So these, these primers are extremely good. Having a less than two thousandths variance, so we got one and a half thousandths variance on these, that is extremely good. So um, our minimum was 0.1268, so 126, almost 127 thousandths. And here with our primer pocket depths, we had a variance of eight ten thousandths, so less than a thousandth of an inch of variance between these primer pockets. That's extremely good. So now we want to take a measurement. Now this is where it starts coming into the actual primer seating depth. This number here represents the thousands below base for anvil touch. So if we look at the base of the case, that's how far the primer is inserted past the top or past the base of the case, which normally is referred to as the bottom. So how far we get beneath that point there is what we are seeing here. When I say thousands below base for anvil touch, that is we take our maximum pocket depth, so the deepest pocket, and our shallowest primer. So if we subtract 126.8 from 128.1, that's what we get, one thousandth and three ten thousandths. So if we seated a little over one thousandths beneath flush, that would ensure our shallowest primer, our shortest primer, was touching the bottom of our deepest pocket. Now if you were to measure a uh, hundred primers, no doubt you might have a larger extreme spread. So this number here would have variance, that's actually extreme spread when you think about it that way. And if you measured a hundred of them, you might have a larger one. But let's just say for the sake of argument, this is how they all are. Well, that's an extremely good batch of primers because a bad lot number of primers, I've seen a as big a spread as like six or eight thousandths in variance of, uh, of primer thickness. So by setting it up this way, we make sure that worst case scenario of our deepest pocket and shallowest primer is completely inserted and touching. So there you have it. That's as simple as it is to determine how to seat your primers when you have a variance in how thick the primers are or how deep the primer pockets are. And our CPS has enough force to overcome those anvil seats and do so reliably for hundreds of thousands of primers without damage to the tool. And so the thing that's happening is when we take the shallowest primer, the shortest primer, and we seat it like this into the deepest pocket, well, then you might ask, well, what about the, the shallow primer pockets? Or what about the uh, shallow primer pockets with the thickest primers? Well, we are uniforming the primer thickness by standardizing to this depth. And that uniformity will almost always result in a precision or accuracy increase as well as a reduction in your extreme spread and standard deviation on the chronograph. So by uniforming the thickness during primer seating, we can achieve the same distance from the front of the primer to the static powder column in the case and the rear of the primer and the distance between the rear of the primer and the firing pin in your rifle. So by standardizing this and uniforming this dimension, it's really a series of dimensions that we're uniforming all at the same time, that is a very good way to achieve the most consistent primer seating and ignition uniformity possible. Now this doesn't mean that you shouldn't perform a primer seating depth test because this does not guarantee that your rifle is actually going to be timed properly here and produce the best accuracy and precision here. But it will undoubtedly 
provide some very good standard deviation and extreme spread. And so that's a, that's a fun and very desirable thing to have. <laughs> now, performing a primer seeding depth test will, will uncover more. So while you can maintain the uniformity, the primer seeding depth test fired with your specific lot number of primers and brass and the rest of your reloading components uh, and your specific rifle system, that will reveal the absolute best place to seat your primer. But if you do not have time or the facilities or the inclination to test that way, well, this is a pretty good way that you can get there on your own without having to shoot the test. Um, it won't get you necessarily to the same place, but it will certainly get you on the road to it. It's important to keep in mind that this is just where anvils touch. Now, you wouldn't want to necessarily set right where the anvils touch, even though we've taken the measurements. We know the, the shortest primer and the deepest pocket, and if we have contact there, then in theory, it should be contact across the entire lot number of components. But it's important to remember that we want to have a little bit of crush on that anvil. So wherever it's contacting, you want to go about two thousandths deeper than that. And that will ensure that you're not only getting a uniform measurement and a uniform placement, but it will ensure that you're getting a uniform, um, or at least somewhat uniform, primer deformation. And uh, that's a big deal too. So uh, now this is just one way to think about this. There are others. Uh, should we sort our primers so that we're not compressing the anvil more on one than the next? Should we sort our brass by primer pocket depth? And uh, this is those, those different ways of thinking about this are going to be the subject of a future video. Also, make sure you go and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you click the notification icon and turn on those notifications so you don't miss future content. We'll see you next time.